The Legend of Mount Oe Ogres Once upon a time around the 10th century, a number of beautiful young women from noble families went missing from the capital city of Kyo. One of them was the daughter of Ikeda no Chunagon Kunikata. Her parents were devastated and asked the imperial court cosmologist to divine her whereabouts. He told them that the ogres who dwell in Senjo Gatake of Mount Oe had kidnapped her and that she was still alive along with many others. Chunagon begged the Emperor Ishijo for help. The court decided to send Minamoto no Raiko, the best samurai commander of the time, to exterminate the ogres and rescue all the girls kidnapped by them. Raiko immediately called his four prime warriors, Watanabe no Tsuna, Sakata no Kintoki, Usui no Sadamitsu, Urabe no Suetaki. Raiko's friend, Fujiwara no Hosho, also joined them. These men were known to be the strongest warriors in Japan. As the men gathered to plan a strategy for the attack, Raiko said, Ogres have supernatural powers, so an ordinary campaign will not work even with a large number of soldiers. They'll strike back by transforming themselves into trees and rocks. Let's ask the gods for divine protection. So they split into teams and went to three shrines to pray to gods for victory. After their pilgrimage, they got back together, disguised themselves as mountain priests, and began a long and dangerous journey to Mount Oe in the Tanba province. After many weeks on the road, Raiko and his men finally arrived at the foot of Mount Oe and encountered a weed cutter. Raiko asked him, Pardon me, but would you show us the way to the grotto at Senjo Gatake, where the ogres supposedly dwell? The weed cutter answered, I've heard they live past these peaks and valleys, but no humans have come back from there. It's too dangerous. The six warriors, however, knew all along that it was going to be a difficult journey, so they marched on. They passed the peaks and valleys and found a huge cave. There was a small lodge inside it with three old men. Filled with suspicion, Raiko said, May I ask who you are and what you do here? One of the old men answered, I know you're skeptical, but we aren't monsters. The ogre king Shuten Doji kidnapped our wives and children. He lives on the other side of the mountain. So we came for revenge, but in our old age, there is nothing much we can do. He continued. You're dressed as mountain priests, but I suspect that you were sent by the emperor to exterminate Shuten Doji, weren't you? The three of us will take you there, but for now, please, get some rest. Relieved, Raiko said. Indeed, the emperor sent us to fight with the ogres but we were lost in the wild mountain path. Thank you for your offer. The old man responded with delight. Rest well and prepare yourselves. The battle won't be easy. There are hundreds of ogres living in the palace. Here we have magic sake called Jinben Kidoku. This sake infuses humans with godlike powers, but it's poisonous to ogres, so they will become numb powerless and lose their ability to transform to trees and rocks. You will easily destroy them. The old man also took out a helmet with a star ornament and gave it to Raiko, saying, This is Hoshi Kaboto, the star helmet. It will protect you from ogres' claws and fangs. It was only then that Raiko realized that the old men were the gods from the three shrines. The six warriors were deeply moved and grateful. Led by the old men, they all climbed to the top of Senjo Gatake. After passing a dark cavern, they came to a river. There, one of the old men said, Go up the river, and you will meet a young, beautiful woman. She will be able to show you the rest of the way. When you actually fight the ogres, we will come back to help. Then the three vanished. The men went up the river, and before long, they found a young woman crying and washing clothes. When Raiko asked who she was, she said she is a princess who was also kidnapped by the ogres. Princess, we were sent by the emperor to kill those ogres and bring you back home. 
So please tell me where their palace is. The young woman was overjoyed to hear the news and started to explain. Go up the river a little further and you will see an iron wall and a gate where a few ogres stand guard. Inside the gate there is an iron palace. That's where Shoot and Doji and his bandits live. Ogres known as the Big Four stay around Shoot and protect him. Shoot and Doji looks like a human being during the day, but turns into a huge monster at night. His skin is pale red with disheveled hair and is very tall. He loves sake so much that he drinks all the time. So please, get inside the palace somehow. Give him sake and make him drunk. Then, kill them as you wish. Raiko and his men went further up the river and found the iron gate. The guard ogres saw them and one of them immediately ran to Shuten Doji and told him some priests are at the gate. Startled, Shuten Doji hollered. What? This palace is so remote that even animals and birds can't come close. How have these humans managed to get here? This is outrageous! Bring them here! The ogres let the warriors get inside the palace. They were waiting in a hallway when Shuten Doji appeared. Shuten was in human form, but was over nine feet tall wearing a plaid kimono with crimson hakama pants, holding an iron rod in his hand. His gaze was truly dreadful. Raiko, the supreme warrior, kept his calm. Shuten howled with a thunderous voice. From where and how did you get to Senjo Gataki? This is no place for a mere mortal! Tell me the truth or I'll rip you apart and gobble you up! Lyko calmly answered, Going through steep mountain roads is what we, the Shigendo practitioners, do. We trained in Nara but got lost on our way home after we left Kyo. However, this was probably meant to happen. We follow the teachings of famous Buddhist monk Enno Gyoja, who studied sorcery from ogres. Please let us stay for the night. We have a bottle of rare sake that we obtained in Kyo. Let's have a feast together. Shuten Doji didn't believe them, so he told his subordinates to bring the ogre's sake and appetizers and offered it to Raiko. Well, let me offer you my delicatessens before I try yours. What was brought in, however, was fresh human blood and meat. Raiko was horrified by the sight, but kept his cool. He drank up the blood and ate the human flesh without hesitation. What a feast you've prepared for us. This is delicious. But seeing this, Shuten became even more suspicious. How is it that you enjoy such offerings as servants of Buddha? Raiko thought quickly on his feet and replied, in our practice, we never refuse food that is offered to us, no matter where it comes from. Shuten Doji was deeply moved and apologized to Raiko. I am sorry to have tested you by serving such unpalatable food. Shuten had his subordinates bring real sake and food, and the feast began. He gradually let his guard down and looked more relaxed. Then Raiko offered him the sake he had been given from the gods of the shrines. This is the sake I brought from the city. I want to share it with you. Let me take a taste first. He had a glass, then filled it again and passed it on to Shuten. Shuten took a gulp and he was dazzled by its nectar-like taste. Shuten Doji was so happy and started telling his life story. My mother had me in the womb for 16 months. As soon as I was born, I started talking, eating, and walking. Because of my unusual birth, I was bullied from early on, and I became a violent and unhappy youth. At eight, I was sent to a temple in the mountain. Soon thereafter, I had a big fight with the priests and ended up killing many of them. I escaped to Mount Hiei and thought I'd settle there, but Denkyo Daishi expelled me with his sacred force. So I came to Mount Oi, but then that wretched Kobor Daishi used his esoteric power and tricked me off the mountain. Kobor Daishi was too powerful. But now they are both dead and no other priests have as much power. I am back now! I live as I please. I kidnap girls, whoever I want, and use them as slaves. No one can stop me now! But Shuten 
suddenly toned down and continued. There's one thing that's been bothering me lately, though. It's the evil samurai called Raiko and his peers. Last spring, I sent my lieutenant, Ibaraki Doji, to Kyo, where he ran into Watanabe no Tuna, fighting with the Onikiri sword, and lost his arm. Ibaraki somehow retrieved his arm a few days later, but now I'm reluctant to return to the city. After these words, Shuten Doji stared at Raiko and said, How strange that your eyes look just like Raiko's. And the guy next to you is... Tsuna! Wait. There's Kintoki, Tsuwataki, Sadamitsu, and Hosho! Ogres, be on your guard! Raiko, however, stayed totally calm and responded with a smile. <laughs> you say that we the mountain priests look like the strongest warriors in Japan. How flattering. But well, we didn't even know their names. You said they were evil, didn't you? I'm very disappointed to hear that we look like those villains. Hearing Raiko's words, Shuten calmed down and said, Indeed, you are right. There's no way Raiko and his men can get here. Since they're on my mind all the time, I must be over-anxious. Maybe I had too much to drink. My apologies. Shuten Doji seemed more relaxed as the ogres drank more of Jinben Kidoku. It quietly seeped into their organs. It was then Ikushima Doji, the younger brother of one of the big four, started to sing and dance. Strangers from the city find their way here and brighten up our feast with their presence. How exciting! He kept repeating the song while he danced. Raiko and his men could read between the lines. It actually meant, let's kill these priests and feast on them. Tsuna then stood up and responded, singing, After all these years, spring has come to the ogre's den. How pleasant it is to see the wind scatter the flowers. Tsuna also danced and sang repeatedly. It meant, Let's slash these ogres like a storm blows away the blooms from trees. The ogres were clueless, though. They were too drunk to truly understand what Tsuna meant. Shuten Doji, dead drunk, said, Ogres, take care of the guests. I'll see you again in the morning. Shuten Doji went back to his room. It didn't take long, and the remaining ogres were all drunk and slept like a log. It was the moment Raiko was waiting for. They took out the armors from the boxes they carried on their back and started preparing for the battle. Raiko put on the star helmet that the gods of the shrines had given him and took Chisui, a renowned sword. Tsuna carried the famous Onikiri, the ogre-severing sword. When they were all ready, Raiko said, O oh, great god of arms, help and guard us against our enemy. Let's go. The ogres drank themselves unconscious and were scattered all over the palace. Our brave warriors passed huge rooms and crossed the stone bridge in the garden. Finally, they found the iron hall at the end of the palace where Shuten slept. With a lattice door and an iron bolt, however, it looked impenetrable. They peeped through the lattices and saw Shuten transforming into a horrifying monster. About twenty feet tall, Red hair standing on end, horns sticking out, thick beard and eyebrows, and huge bear-like arms and legs. As Raiko and his men struggled to get in, the three gods appeared again from nowhere. Well done, gentlemen. You finally made it this far. Shuten drank plenty of the Jinben Kitoku tonight. His arms and legs are chained to the pillars and he is numb and devoid of supernatural powers. Raiko, decapitate him first, then the rest of you tackle him all at once. After saying that, all three gods vanished. Lo and behold, the door was unlocked. The men entered the halls and closed in on Shuten's head. Raiko drew Chisui and prayed. O oh, gods of the three shrines! Join your forces and bestow them upon me. 
Raiko bowed three times, swung the sword, and decapitated Shuten. With the eyes wide open, Shuten blasted. How dare you betray me, monks! I trusted your words, but no! This is unforgivable! His headless torso tried to stand up, but was unable to because it had been chained. The head kept screaming, but Raiko and his men shredded the torso. Then suddenly, Shuten's head lifted off and came flying towards Raiko. He had no time to dodge, and the head tried to sink its teeth into Raiko's head. Even without the torso, Shuten's jaw was amazingly strong, and it wouldn't let go. Raiko, however, had the star helmet on, so Shuten was unable to crack it. Eventually, the head ran out of energy and fell on the floor. With his last gasp, Shuten moaned. Shame on you, Raiko, betraying our trust. Ogres never play dirty tricks. As the warriors took out Shuten's remains, hundreds of ogres came rushing in. The Ibaraki Doji was there as well, shouting, I'll avenge our master's death! Tsuna answered, Remember me, Ibaraki? You didn't beat me last time, and nor will you today! That was a fierce duel. It seemed like it would never end. However, Ibaraki grew so much stronger, and after quite some time, he finally pinned Tsuna down. Seeing Tsuna in imminent danger, Raiko rushed over and cut off Ibaraki Doji's head. The other ogres flung themselves at the warriors. It was a long and challenging battle. Hundreds of ogres came to revenge their masters, but Raiko and his men, protected by the god's gift, kept on fighting until there was no ogre left alive. After the battle was over, Raiko stepped inside the prison and saw the most atrocious sight. Corpses, skeletons, and all the kidnapped women who were barely alive. Raiko said, Princesses, the ogres are all dead. No need to worry any longer. We're here to save you. The women were ecstatic to be rescued. They never thought they would see their families again. Raiko and his men took all of the women and left the ogres' grotto. When they reached the village of Shimomura, at the foot of Mount Oi, Raiko sent a messenger to Kyo to announce their victory. Before long, everyone in Kyo knew about Raiko and his warriors. By the time they reached Kyo, the city was mobbed with people who wanted to catch a glimpse of their heroes. The princesses returned home to see their parents once again. Among them was the daughter of Ikeda no Chunagon. She and her parents embraced each other and shed tears of joy. The Emperor showered Raiko and his men with the highest praise, and bestowed an enormous amount of rewards upon them. Peace came to the land for a long time thereafter, with Raiko and his men hailed as their magnificent guardians. Mm -hmm.